The announcement of Disney buying the rights to something used to stir up all kinds of excitement for many. This is the company that launched the Marvel Cinematic Universe, after all. The acquisition of Star Wars in particular seemed like a match made in heaven. The potential seemed limitless. As the years went on, however, the cracks started to appear in the facade. Disney started making questionable decisions, and their bad habits started to surface. The first crack in the facade appeared after The Force Awakens hit theaters. It quickly became apparent that Disney intended to uphold a very active release schedule with the Star Wars franchise, echoing their approach to the MCU. This led to a problem their iteration of the Star Wars films had, though. No singular vision. Many have criticized the inherent uniformity of the MCU films. The Star Wars films suffer from the opposite problem. Tonal inconsistency, sequels undoing everything previous films had established for no reason, stories people weren't necessarily asking for, Whereas you at least knew what to expect with the MCU, the Star Wars films, which ironically would have benefited from a uniform approach, became too much too often. Audiences lost faith and interest. The cracks furthered with the release of Avengers Endgame. Disney clearly wanted to continue their franchise, but this proved problematic as Endgame had presented a pretty logical conclusion, and all films following it felt awkward and tacked on. The uncertainty of what to do next, coupled with the outbreak of the pandemic in 2020, offered them an opportunity to withdraw their theatrical releases and experiment with other formats. 2019 saw the release of The Mandalorian, a limited series that featured no popular characters from the Star Wars franchise. It was a massive success. The show's second season saw the introduction of multiple well-known characters in the Star Wars universe, many of which were announced to get their own spin-offs afterwards. 2021 saw the release of WandaVision, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, What If, and Hawkeye. 2022 saw the release of The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Moon Knight, and Ms. Marvel, with further shows announced. The second anything they produce is even remotely successful, they latch on and compulsively announce another five follow-ups afterwards. This causes property fatigue. Now you feel obligated to watch everything they release or else you'll fall behind, and it's hard to keep track of everything. Many people have burned out and tapped out of these franchises because of this. Disney single-handedly oversaturated its own market. This next one is largely speculative, but compelling nevertheless. In the months leading up to the release of The Last Jedi, articles talking about how adorable Porgs were started being pumped out in the months leading up to the film's release, even though no one had actually seen the film yet. These seemingly innocuous articles almost felt like someone attempting to spin a controversial film by focusing on a likable aspect of it. Articles attempting to soften the public opinion on the Star Wars films by suggesting they aren't as bad as people remember, or that the fans critical of them are a toxic minority seem to circulate frequently as well, across a number of seemingly unrelated websites coinciding with the release of anything Star Wars related. I don't have any physical evidence that these writers and sites are being paid to generate this content, but it is dubious how simultaneously it does seem to occur, and how suspiciously it seems like someone trying to exercise damage control. The first example is pretty harmless, which includes product placement, locations, and actors that are popular in overseas markets are being included in these films. This is an understandable business decision to make, obviously, and it doesn't really harm the film in question, either. It becomes a problem when you change a character's ethnicity because a prominent country in the overseas market has a problem with the region the character is originally from. When you remove characters from theatrical posters because of their ethnicity, or choose stories based on whether they're acceptable in overseas markets because of their censorship laws. Time travel, ghosts, and zombies are off the table, among other topics. And while I understand the logistics behind catering to such a lucrative market, you're subjecting all other markets to the whims of their censorship and furthering these problematic ideals. Simply put, Disney sets the bar for their properties too high. They inject large budgets and intend to launch cinematic universes with everything they produce, meaning moderate successes aren't acceptable anymore. Homegrown properties like Tron have suffered because of these large-scale expectations, essentially setting them up for failure. These films aren't allowed to be self-contained stories anymore either, because everything is treated as a franchise-launching title. That's a terrible way to make films, and a terrible way to treat new properties that you're bringing to the screen. 
All of these issues I've explored have also shown up in many other prominent studios, and for obvious reason. Disney is relatively successful. It makes sense for them to keep track of their progress and take notes. The heart of the problem is the fact that the MCU approach is not a one-size-fits-all method, and studios are failing to realize this until their latest offering bombs at the box office. Just how many failed cinematic universes is it going to take? Only time can tell. Now, I don't believe Disney to be inherently evil. They've invested a ludicrous amount of money in their properties, after all. On paper, this means they're trying to make the most profitable films possible, and good films are generally profitable. They've made their share of questionable decisions, though, which causes my faith in them to waver from time to time. I do believe they can still deliver wonderful films and shows, nevertheless. It's just a matter of who's at the helm, what they're envisioning for the property in mind, and whether they're learning from their successes and failures or not. Until next time.